let's look at this interesting question on page 19. This one, I will say, please try out, must try out. If you need to take a break and go to sleep, wake up and continue, also can. Here you have a resistor, all identical. And the emitter, negligible, negligible resistance, so you don't, they don't have resistance, okay, good lah. Reading on emitter 1 is 0 0.6. What are the reading on other emitters? That's all the info they give, wow. Look at this circuit. Loop and loop and loop. How, ah? Uh? Well, the first step I'm going to do is, this looks a bit crowded. I am going to redraw this thing. So maybe I will do something like that. Hmm, there's a resistor here that's R and the resistors that R. So I combine those into two R. Okay, that's the first loop. Then you have battery. Then you have one R. Then you have another. Ooh, got three here. R R R. So in that loop, I can basically combine that into one resistor with three R resistors. The R I just create lah, because I know they're identical, so each one will be R lah. Okay, so I redraw already. Now what? Try this one out. Don't give in quite yet. And I want you to think about this. You see, they're asking about current, right? So should you use Kirchhoff's second law or Kirchhoff's first law? Which one will be more helpful for you to solve this? Hmm, think about it. Think hard about it. Draw loops lah, write equation, everything. Okay, I'm going to label the, the currents now. I2, I think that one. Then here is I1. I'm lazy to draw emitter, so I just label current. Okay, so, so it's like a water fountain like that. The middle go up, the side all come down, come down, come down. So current will split and then go down to I3 and I4. If you're curious what this one up here is, this is I3 plus I4. Because they haven't split yet, ma. later only they split. This one here is already I1. But nah, we don't need to worry about those. First things first. How are we going to do this? If you try Kirchhoff's second law, you'll find that you have too many unknowns. That's not, it's not second law. Kirchhoff's first law. Because you say, okay, miss. So I2 equals to, this is the main one uh, coming out from the battery, I1 plus I3 plus I4. That's not very helpful because eh, you don't, you don't know, you have too many unknowns. How? Well, the most you know is I1, 0 0.6. Well, you could make a whole bunch of uh, unknown equations. Let's see if you can do that. You will need, at this rate, you have one unknown, two unknown, three unknown. So you will need three current equations with three unknowns. Then you solve simultaneous equation. A lot of work. The one, la. the one, the one, the one. So Kirchhoff first law not very helpful now. Maybe later it'll be useful. Let's use Kirchhoff's second law to help us a bit. The thing that we know is here is 0 0.6. Okay, so we start with that 0 0.6 amps. Is that 0 0.6 amps? Yeah, they told us here. So let's start with this loop. Let's go with the battery. Come on like that. I call that the first loop. Loop number one. For loop number one, what do we have? You have going up by a certain battery potential. I don't know why is it. Leh. PD across battery, I just call V, lah, whatever it is. And then you have one potential drop. Boing. Some current, I1, times your resistor, 2R. If you haven't combined resistor, then you have IR plus IR. Lah. Okay, This one we know is 0 0.6, so that's convenient. But we don't know the rest. Eh. I never mind, just put. So your V will be... What is 0 0.6 times 2? 1.2 R. R is a constant. Okay, lah, we believe it as that. But we'll use this some more. Now, we know that the PD is 1.2 R. Let's choose another loop. Let's use... Hmm, let's use this loop. Leh. Loop number 2. Can ah? Try and see. Come, loop number 2. So loop number two, you're going up the battery, only one battery. Then you drop I3 times R. But very conveniently, you already know the battery PD at first is already 
1.2 R. So you just write 1.2 R. Oh, 1.2 R. The R and R can cancel out. Yay! You divide both sides by R. So R is gone. So then I3 is just 1.2 amperes. Oh, very nice. That was a trick. We didn't know V, but in the end, the R cancelled out. So you need to see I3 or A3 is 1.2. Wow, so easy. I already straight away find the answer. Okay, long. But since we're not in, in normal exam, you find you're confirmed yeah, this is correct, you just circle B already. But since now we're problem solving, let's might as well find the rest so we can convince ourselves. But in exam, you don't have enough time to do all this. Uh, next one. You draw a loop. Oh, wait. I need to draw here. Loop from the battery up. This is loop number three. Number three, no more space. So I write on the left side. Again, you have battery up. V equals to I4 times 3R. But again, your battery, you know, the equation for it is I3R. Eh, sorry, I 1.2R. So divide both sides by R. I4 is... Yay, 1.2 divided by 3. 0.4. Ampere. Correct. Although this is a tricky question, you see, you get one correct, ah, confirm you already know the answer already. Which is good, because they know you take a lot of time. What else do we have? I, A2. Oh, A2. A2, you can use... This is where you can use Kirchhoff's first law. Because of... You know that here your current I2 will split into I1 and this one is I3 plus I4. Split mine into everything. So if you know all the currents, you can just add them all together. So I2 will be I1 plus I3 plus I4. I1 is 0 0.6. I3 is 1.2. I4 is... 0 0.4. So what is I2? Let's check. Dun, 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 dun. It is 2.2. Yay! So this is how you can solve one by one. The question is, Miss, uh, if you don't solve one by one, you can just straight away check the answer and know. Uh. The answer is maybe if you apply your Kirchhoff's first law, this one, to every single answer, you will realize that it's true for every single answer, so something wrong, so you cannot use. In this case, I cannot use. Sometimes the answer may give differently otherwise. Okay, I'm kind of blocking the M's behind me, but yeah, I wrote M's. 